An HUD or a HUD is a heads up display. HUD elements are these sci fi elements that appear on transparent screens that allow users to see different information without having to actually move their field of view. Different HUD elements can be added in to sci fi animations to give another feel or add in an extra level of detail to those animations. In today's video, we're going to be using geometry nodes to make two separate circular HUD elements. And in a future video, we will be creating linear HUD elements as well. With that, let's actually figure out how we can do this. In our default scene, we'll go ahead and bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and then change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll go ahead and press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree. We'll zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now, since we want circular HUD elements, we'll press shift A and search for a curved circle, which will act as the base for our HUD element. Now, when we plug this into the group output, we should be able to see our circle over there. Now we could rotate this so that they appear in our front view, but instead, I'll keep it just as is and I'll press seven to go into the top view and have everything aligned to this particular view. Now, if you actually look at it, it's still fairly jagged. So I'll increase the resolution from 32 to something like 128 so that it's nice and smooth. Next, we need to convert this into an actual circle that can be seen even if the overlays are switched off. So to do that, we'll press shift A and search for a curve to mesh. And now for the profile curve, we can use a curve circle, but that would give it a 3D feel. And since we want these to be transparent and they're generally used on 2D screens, I want to maintain this as a complete two dimensional object. So instead of a curved circle, I'll search for a curved line. Now I'll take this curved line and plug it into the profile curve. And clearly the Z value is giving us the right sort of thickness. As you can see, it's still a two dimensional disc, but it has some thickness that can be seen even without overlays. So this is a bit too thick. So I'll change this to maybe 0.4 and that should be good enough. Now for the first HUD element, I want some dots to appear on the inside and the outside. And I want these dots to be changing over time. So to do that, I'm actually going to duplicate this curved circle itself and convert them to points. So I'll press shift A and search for a join geometry node. And simply to duplicate this, all I'd have to do is take this and plug that into the join geometry. And then we can make whatever changes we want over here. So the first thing that I have to do is actually scale it down or scale it up to make it a smaller ring or a larger ring. So I'll press shift A and search for a transform geometry. And I'll plug that in right here. And I'll change the scale on all of the axes down to maybe 0.9. So now you can see we have the smaller circle. Next, I need to convert this to a bunch of points. So I'll go ahead and press shift A and search for a curve to points node. And now after I plug that in, I can determine how many points I want. So if I actually zoom in, you should be able to see the points and it's up to you as to what distance or how packed you want it to be. I think I'll go with a value of 40. Now that I have these as points, I need to actually convert them to circles. And we're going to use a similar technique that we've done multiple times on this channel before, which is searching for an instance on points node so that we can actually place some object on each of these points. Now I want to place a circle. So I'll press shift A and search for a curve circle and I'll change the radius from one to something like 0.2. And then I'll plug this curve into the instance. Now 0.2 is still way too large as you can clearly see. So let's change this to maybe 0.02 and then play around with it till you get a size that you're happy with. I think I'll go with 0.04. Now, obviously these are just the rims. We don't have an actual circle. So I'll press shift A and search for a fill curve node and that will convert it into a mesh with a solid face. Now you could have used a mesh circle directly by searching for a mesh circle. And if you were to use the mesh circle, you would have had to change the fill type from none to n or triangles and then place this in over there by changing the radius properly and plugging this in to the instance and you would have gotten the exact same result. However, I just chose to use the curve circle and the fill curve node because I wanted to leave the possibility of using this curve circle to create another border around each of these circles in the future if I feel like it. However, for this tutorial, I feel like that'll make it a bit too clustered. So I'm going to leave it just like this. Now I don't want every single one of these instances to be present. So I want only a few of these to actually have these circles present. So I'll press shift A and search for a noise texture and I'll take the color and plug it into a color ramp node and I'll change this from linear to constant and I'll bring this in just like that. So now I'll have roughly half of them as not present and half of them as present. And then I can plug the color into the factor and this color as the selection. So that way you can see that only half of them will be present. Now to actually animate this, I could change this to something like 4D and play around with the W slider, or I can keep this at 3D itself or even 2D will work for this scenario. And then I'll press shift A and search for a wave texture. Now I'll change the scale of this wave texture down to something like one and I'll play with the phase offset to create the actual animation. Now, as long as this phase offset changes by a multiple of two pi, I'll be able to make this a looping animation as well. So we'll do that in the animation section. But till then, let's create the same dots on the outer ends as well. The entire process is going to be very similar. All we have to do is take this transform geometry and press shift D to duplicate it. Then we can take the original curve circle and plug it into the 
input for this transform geometry. And this time on the scale, instead of scaling it down to 0.9, we'll maybe scale it up to 1.2 or something like that. Now to actually see this line, we'll go ahead and plug this into the joint geometry over here. And now you can see where the circle is. Next, we are going to have to do the same curves to points followed by the instance on points and these as well. So let's actually just duplicate these two, press shift D and then plug this into the curve and take this and plug this into the joint geometry instead of this transform geometry. So let's remove this connection. To use the shortcut for removing connections as I just did, which was control right click, you have to have node wrangler enabled from your preferences. Now for the instance, I want the same curves. So I'll just take this fill curve and plug this mesh into the instance. And now I have it over there. Similarly, I want the same selection. So let's come back here to this color and plug this into the selection for this circle as well. And because the size is different, you will have a different variation of dots over here, which is exactly why I will just use the same textures instead of creating another set of textures. So that's good enough for the HUD element. Let's go ahead and set the material by pressing shift A and searching for a set material node and plugging that in after the joint geometry and choosing the default material itself because we're not using that for anything else. Then for the animation, we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, end frame will keep it at 150 so that it's a five second long animation. Output folder can be wherever you want to store it. File format, we're going to choose FFmpeg video. The encoding, we're going to change the container to MPEG4 and the output quality to perceptually lossless. Then we'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero. We'll zoom into the wave texture, go to the phase offset, change it to zero and tap I. Then we'll go to the last frame, which is frame 150, and we'll change the phase offset to two star pi, which will be one full loop and we'll hover over the phase offset and tap I. Then we'll select the node so that the keyframes appear down here. And in case your keyframes still aren't appearing, make sure that you have the actual cube object or the geometry node object selected. Then once the keyframes appear, press T and choose linear. So that way you'll get a smooth loop of these dots changing over time, as you can see over here. For the material, we'll switch over to the viewport shading of render. We'll go to the world properties and change the background to a value of zero, which makes it completely black. Then we'll switch off overlays and we'll switch off the light as well. Then we'll switch this window from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. And if you can't see the nodes, tap A to select everything and period on your numpad to centralize the nodes. Now for the material, I actually just want them to be emissive. So I'll change the emission all the way to one. And of course you can choose what color you want the emission to be. So maybe for this video, I'll go with this orangish color, except I'm going to keep the saturation at something like 0.95 and the emission strength to something really high. Let's go with five or 10. Now to get some nice blue, we'll go to our render properties and switch on blue. And if you want, you could switch on screen space reflections and things like that, but I'll keep that off because I'm not actually adding this to any other object in the scene. Next, I'll go to my material properties, go all the way down to the bottom and I'll change the blend mode from opaque to alpha blend. I'll switch off show back face and I'll change the shadow mode to none. Then I can actually increase the transmission from zero to something like 0.8 to actually make it transparent. Now you can't quite tell that it's transparent, but if you have other objects present in the scene, they will become visible even when they're behind this particular hard object. You might have to play around with the transmission and make it something much more, but that is the base idea. Similarly, the emission strength also might have to be reduced to actually be able to see objects behind the object. But for now, we'll keep it like this. So that's actually the end of the first HUD material. Next, we'll go ahead and create the second HUD material. This is going to be very similar to maybe a music visualizer as well. So it'll actually come in handy in many other areas as well. For that, let's go ahead and switch our window back to the geometry node editor and then press shift D to duplicate this particular circle. Now we don't want to make changes to this geometry node tree itself because that will change it for this as well. So let's go ahead and press this button to duplicate the geometry node tree so that this becomes Becomes its own independent object. Now we don't need most of these nodes except for the main curve circle that we converted into a visible circle. So that's these three nodes. So apart from these three nodes, let's go ahead and select the rest of the nodes and delete them. Then we can take this and plug it into the group output. Once you've plugged it into the geometry and you have the ring, we can start dealing with the other elements, which are going to be these spokes that come out of this particular ring. To create those, we have to join them in with this original ring. So just like last time, we'll search for a joint geometry and plug that in right here. Now, again, like last time, we might not want a total of 128 points. So we're going to press shift A and search for a curve to points node. And we'll simply plug this curve into the curve. Now we can change the count to something that we like. Maybe I'll go with 40 and to actually see the points. You can control shift click it with the node wrangler enabled to see the different points. Now the useful thing about using a curve to points instead of just using the vertices as points is that now we actually get the normal and the rotation outputs for each of these points so that we can align whatever curves we add to this later on very 
easily. We want to convert these points to actual curves. So let's press Shift A and search for an instance on points node and plug that in after the points. Now for the instance, I'm going to go ahead and use a curve line. So let's press Shift A and search for a curve line and then simply take this curve line and plug it into the instance. Now, obviously the orientation is incorrect. So let's fix that by changing this down to zero and then just increasing it on the X by a little bit for now. Then back in the top view, we'll take the rotation and plug that into the rotation of the instance on points. So this seems like they're on the right direction. So let's just increase this to maybe something like 0.25 for now. And we'll be changing the scale later on. Maybe I can actually increase it to a larger scale like one and make sure that the scale doesn't reach this level at all. Now these are lines and just like before, if you switch off overlays, they can't be seen. So we need to convert these to actual bars. For that, I'm going to go ahead and convert these from curves back to meshes. So I'll press Shift A and search for a curve to mesh node. Now, just like last time for the profile curve, I'll use a curve line. Once you plug the curve line in, clearly the Z axis is the wrong axis. So let's change that back to zero and we'll change the end value on the X to something like 0.1. And that's also the wrong value. So let's change it on the Y and that seems to be the right axis. So let's just give it some nice thickness and something like that seems fine. Maybe I'll go with a value of 0.12. And now we simply have to play around with this scale. So if you actually look at the scale, we can see that if we scale it on the X axis, it goes radially out. So whatever scaling we do, I want it to be only on the X axis. So to get control over just the X axis, I can press shift A and search for a combined X, Y, Z node. Now I can take this and plug that into the scale and then we can change the Y and the Z values to one and we can play around with the X separately. For the X, I'm going to actually create another looping animation using a noise texture. But this time for the noise texture, I'm going to loop it using a technique that we've used multiple times on our channel before, but instead of using the W slider in the 4D version, I'm going to use the 3D version itself and actually use the Z location. For that, I'll have to press Shift A and search for a position node as well as a separate XYZ node and then plug the position in and then combine them again using a combined XYZ node. Now, instead of combining the X, Y and the Z, I'll combine only the X and the Y and plug this vector into the vector. So now for the Z, I can actually change this around to whatever I want and I'll get a nice looping animation. However, to actually create the looping animation, I'll press Shift A and search for for a mixed color node, plug that in here. And then I'll duplicate this by pressing shift D, plugging that down here and just rearranging the nodes a little bit as you can see me doing right now. Now I'll duplicate this combined XYZ node and I'll plug the X to the X and the Y to the Y. And essentially this Z is going to take on the same values that we would have done in the normal looping of the noise texture with the 4D coordinates. Let's plug this color in here and I will use a similar value for the factor as well. Apart from that, I'm actually seeing that this is not causing too much of a change. So I'll press shift A and search for a math node, plug that in right here and change it from add to multiply. And that way, as we multiply it by larger numbers, we should get a more exaggerated animation. So let's go back here, take this vector, plug it into the vector. And for the Z values, I'm actually going to change it from a value of zero to a value of one. So let's keep this at zero. And instead of adding keyframes for three separate objects, I actually just want one single value node and I want to control it using that single value node. Now I feel like all of these are done way too many times on my channel. So I'm planning on creating a tutorial on creating the ultimate looping noise texture and converting that into a single node that I'll save as an asset and use for future videos as well. If you're interested in looking at that video, let me know and I'll definitely create a video for that as well. Now, since this is going to go from a value of zero to one, this has to go from a value of minus one to zero. So to get that done, I'll press shift A and search for a math node and I'll change this from add to subtract and I'll subtract one minus whatever value is there over here. That way, as this value goes from zero to one, this output Output will go from one to zero. However, I wanted it to go from minus one to zero. So that's very simple to do. All I have to do is search for another math node and this time change it from add to multiply and multiply it by a value of minus one, which will now mean that this output will go from minus one to zero. So let's take this, plug that into the Z and then take this, plug this into this Z. And because I'm going to be going from a value of zero to one itself, I can take this and plug it into the factor as well. So that way I have to add only one keyframe for this value and it'll become a looping animation. So again, on frame zero, I'll hover over this value and I'll tap I. And then on frame 150, I'll hover over this value and type in one. I'll select the node, I'll press I. And down here, I'll press T and choose linear. That way, I should have a nice loop of this motion. And of course, it's up to you. You can play around with the scale values or the detail values, but make sure that whenever you're playing around with these, you change it for both of these together. And only then will it actually loop. So maybe I'll go with the scale of four on both of these noise textures and I'll actually reduce the detail down to zero. Now I might make a few changes before I actually render the video, but this is another HUD element. 
and you can actually use this for music visualizers and things like that as well. Remember, this is completely procedural. So if at any point of time you want to increase the number of curves, you can always come here and change the count. And while changing the count, you might have to go and change the actual thickness of these curves so that they don't overlap as you can see happening over there. If I just start reducing this, the overlap also disappears. So it's really up to you as to how you want to do it. But that's another element. To give this its own material, again, I'll go ahead and first plug this mesh into the joint geometry, remove the viewer, and then move the group output to the side, press shift A and search for a set material node, plug that in, and I'll use the default material itself. Then if I switch over to a viewport shading of render, you can see the two different HUD elements that I have present. And if you're happy with the way everything looks, you can actually render out each HUD element separately. You could render them out together. You can use them in game assets or as elements within your sci-fi animations or short films. But for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and press render animation. I hope this was a useful one to you. And there are an infinite possibilities of sci-fi HUDs. These two were very simple ones and I plan on creating more complex ones and releasing tutorials for those as well and eventually creating an entire sci-fi HUD element pack and releasing that as a product on either Gumroad, Patreon or maybe another digital store that I'll try to link to YouTube. For the time being, I have a few announcements that I'll try to talk about right now, which is that I've been working on a short film, but I'm not getting enough time to actually work on it and render it out the way I want. But I still want to continue posting videos like this every single day. So the plan is to try and make a few extra videos as soon as possible so that I have some buffer time where I can actually work on the short film. I also have a tournament coming up in Japan, so I won't be available towards the end of November for a total of 10 days. So I have to make sure that I have tutorials ready for those 10 days as well, which will be scheduled and uploaded automatically. So for all of these, I don't know how I'm going to be able to make all of these tutorials possible. So for the next few days, I won't be creating complex tutorials. I'll be making fairly simple tutorials just like this one, and I'll keep more complex or abstract tutorials once a week. Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue and I'll be able to create much better content once I'm done with those different engagements that I have. So if you've watched this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you actually heard the announcement, congratulations, you're probably the only one. Comment down below if you did. And until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching once again. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.